So we started testing it early on and like just from the very first moment, it was working actually quite well. For the next couple of weeks, we had to figure out a way to merge it into the flow of conversations in TDO. And that was also super exciting. And when the first version was released and when we first tried it, it was like immediately we got like 40% less conversation. And we had this rule for the first couple of weeks that we were joining every conversation and we were like overseeing how Lyra is doing. And at any point where it was making mistakes or it was hallucinating a bit, we jumped in and said like, no, 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 the actual truth is blah, blah, blah. And we, we kept doing that for the first couple of weeks and then it just kept rolling basically it was like you know this this is the new new world and this is new reality uh, for customer service so we we embraced it and we are actually very happy to, that we don't have to reply to the same questions over and over the very basic questions for example when the new model of cloud from anthropic was released we were the first to, to test it internally in our project and we had to see how it acts comparing to the previous models and how it like connects the dots between different article different articles or different historical conversations. It's definitely better and um, it, it worked amazingly well with the, with, with the content that we have for it. And it feels like the content we provide for Lyro almost feel like it's inflated now. Like we, the, the, the number of questions we serve uh, and we have in our knowledge base just keeps growing. It's uh, like at almost 2000 questions and answers right now. And at some point we were, we were worried if that's like make misleading for the AI model, but now with the Cloud 3, it's working amazingly and it, it just has a lot of knowledge. When we initially introduced Lyro, we thought it was a good idea to keep an eye on it and check if uh, the responses provided by the AI model are in fact correct. So we have de developed this uh, process that we were actually checking sample of Lyro's conversations every month. And initially, when we started about a year ago, it was about 70% of the success rate. Now we are sitting at about 83%. So definitely throughout the year, we have made some good improvements. And what we are doing is basically just trying to add missing content to our FAQ. So Lyro is always able to cover a wide variety of topics. But the biggest challenge is actually staying up to date with all the product updates going on in Tidio because our product is evolving dynamically. So one of the biggest challenges when dealing with AI in general are the hallucinations. So when when actually AI is coming up with irrelevant answers that are not true, it can be caused by a variety of things. We are trying to keep our content neat, not messy internally. So we can always have an organized structure of our content. So Lyra is always is able to pick up on the most precise information from our database when it's generating the answers. If you pay enough attention to your FAQ and maintain it, you are able to bring your success rate up. When our knowledge base was growing rapidly, we scraped everything we had from the historical conversations through knowledge base articles, through like manually written pairs of questions and answers, it, it, it quickly became hard to manage because some of the information were repeat, repeated across many sources. And so what we try to do is we try to have an owner or like a knowledge manager who knows the entire knowledge base, like he knows where the he or she knows where the content is coming from and that, that person is able to connect the dots basically how it works usually like the, the first step is that we you notice this because these conversations are then transferred to human operators like on, on chat you get a regular chat and the users or, or clients are confused a bit because they heard a weird answer or maybe the answer wasn't true and that's where we highlight it or we just share it across uh, across our team but then we do these periodical checks where we have a sample of different chats that Lyra had we try to exclude all of the very basic greetings like replying to questions like hi or like who are you etc so we, we try to uh, get rid of that from the sample and then we just check them one by one and see wh whether the information was true or not and if we can improve it and what was the source of the information and if the source is correct as well. So having um, one source of truth, like your knowledge base or help center is making the, the life of all the agents easier. And it's ma it makes the whole process of managing your AI uh, way easier. When we introduced the Cloud 3, uh, it felt like it's a more mature 
person almost like more intelligent, handles text better, knows more stuff, is able to connect the dots better. So it feels like a more seasoned support operator, like one of the more experienced people on our team. Like they know how to connect the dots and convey the message in an easy to grasp way. And that's the same with uh, upgrading our model. I think we definitely notice is that we can turn off all of the Lyra tasks. So the like manual chatbots that trigger when some topics are mentioned. And we use this feature to handle, for example, SQL generation manually by our agents. So with Cloud3, it's just better at doing that. So it can generate the, the leads for us or mention the type of answer we, we wanted it to generate. However, when we were tracking our CSAT, there's a different side of the story where we noticed when Lyra is left on, on its own and there are no humans uh, to help it, meaning we are offline on chat because no one is available, then we tend to get negative CSAT rating because Lyra is like, okay, I, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't know the answer to this question, but I'll redirect you to a human and we are not there. So it's a matter of tweaking the flow and uh, this, this has been fixed already. So the, the flow is already smoother now and we notice that the CSAT is, has not dropped at all. When they realize they are talking to AI, they, they switch the way they communicate a little bit. So they seem to be very careful about uh, phrasing the questions they ask. So it's like a, a question after question, and you can see they are trying to make it as refined as possible just, just because they want the answer fast. And for those who know and embrace that it's, it's the AI and don't want to immediately be transferred to a, to a human operator, they do it because they appreciate that they can get a precise answer in, in a matter of seconds, rather than wait for being transferred to maybe reiterate it again to a human being. They, they just know that they can get this answer on their own. So it's a bit like a improved self-service where they don't have to dig through a bunch of articles. They get the answer really fast and they, they accept it and they, they prefer to have a good answer rather than wait for a perfect one. We received quite a lot of positive feedback when people see how Lyra is performing for us and they are genuinely impressed with the quality of answers they're receiving. So Lyra is generating some good traction for us and some interest in Lyra itself. Yeah, but we, we keep our satisfaction rating at uh, almost the exact same level as before introducing uh, AI, which is a good sign. With the volume we handle and the complexity of issues that we are getting from Lyra, it's actually a, a good sign. It covers a, a ton of traffic for us. Feels like, like the satisfaction across the team uh, is higher. We don't have to deal with the stress of replying to the same questions over and over and we have more time for every customer now so we can afford spending the extra 15 minutes to get into the into the details of the problem that they have and it has also changed the specific knowledge that our agents should have so since things are more technical and more complex now a lot of agents had to grow into like the technical support or they have they are specialists now for example in terms of tdo billing or they can spend time in helping users set up Lyra for them. So I think if you are thinking if you, sh if you should introduce uh, AI into your customer service, you shouldn't wait. It's going to make everyone's life easier and it's going to vastly improve the way support is provided in your company. We definitely want to keep uh, bringing our success rate up. Uh, so right now we are sitting at about 83%. We want to go to 90%. Yeah, exactly. So our next goal would be for Lyro to help customers even when they want to talk about pricing or upgrading to a different plan or picking a TDO Plus, for example. And we want to highlight these conversations and jump in at the right time, maybe help them with the final decision. And on top of that, obviously, we need to uh, we need to make sure that the knowledge base is always up to date and that we have this one source of truth that we can trust and that we have our internal internal like trust score high so that we can you know, let Lyro do its, do its job. We want to provide a good experience by blending Lyro and our chatbots so we can really have a Lyro helping us automate the repetitive questions, but while also we can be proactive by using chatbots. Uh, it's a great help and we are excited to be a part of the of the game and leading with the the best ai tool 
for customer service. It feels like we are we are almost like a surfer that uh, is catching a wave at the perfect perfect time, and we are using the exact same tool that our customers are using, which is also exciting, and it allows us to have the exact same challenges that they have. In six months, this conversation uh, would be would be probably uh, different because the things are changing so fast. And every week we get a new announcement from like a major provider that they've released a new version of the model or there's a new breakthrough. So it's important to uh, uh, get used to it uh, early on and, and, and embrace AI in your customer service.